Hello, class. Uh, another recorded lecture for College Algebra here. This will be section 4.4, and we're going to continue the idea of modeling using the quadratic equation. And so in uh, section 4.4, there are quite a few different models that uh, were discussed, and so I decided to pick two. And so the other ones that are in there, uh, the idea, the concept, the applications are very similar, except uh, I figured let's just focus on two. You guys get good at those. And if you ever had to do the other ones, the, the process is very similar. So what we're going to do, and you can see my theme, is talk about revenue again. This is a little bit different because this is talking about revenue in a way where we're bringing in an economic concept where we have a demand and supply. And so uh, specifically a revenue uh, is generated by the demand curve, right? If somebody wants to buy an iPhone, right? <laughs> There's a, usually a pretty big demand for that. I don't know, the new Apple Watch. Uh, I kind of want one. <laughs> so that's what you would consider demand. And so economists generate these equations uh, where typically demand uh, equation is dependent on price, right? Uh, when we talk about uh, the demand equation, as the price goes up for something, usually the demand comes down and vice versa. If you want to get rid of some stuff, you usually drop your price and more people will want to buy it. And um, except for iPhones, which it seems like the more expensive ones are the ones everybody wants. Uh, most uh, the time that is definitely the case in, in most other products. And so the idea of a demand equation would be set up where, uh, whoops, here we go, what is the presentation up here? So the demand equation would be set up in such a way where you're going to give, you're going to be given a demand equation that some economists derive, and it'll be dependent on price. And then how do you find revenue? Well, it's the demand or the number of units that you would sell times the price. You know, for example, instead of using equations, let's just use numbers, a couple of them, right? So say like uh, you're, at, you're running an Apple store and the uh, iPhone costs a thousand dollars, right? And right now we have uh, a demand for 50 iPhones. So what would be the revenue? It would be the price times the demand. And that would be 1,000 times 50. And that would be $50,000 that the iPhone or the iPhone uh, made for the store revenue wise. And so that's this concept that we've in introduced right here. That the revenue is going to be the demand and the demand equation is dependent on price times the price. And so the strategy is you take the demand equation and multiply it by P. And what will end up happening is you'll end up with a P squared somewhere. And so that ends up giving us our quadratic, which we will uh, uh, have to solve. And so the problem that we'll walk through is this one. It's given a model, and I believe this is a model for uh, tickets sold at a specific sporting event. And the model for the tickets are given by uh, 21,000 minus 150 P. And so if we went to the whiteboard, it would be the equation of D of P is 21,000 minus 150 P. And so how do we solve this? Well, first thing we know is we need to generate the Weberner equation, which depends on price. And that is P times D of P. And so when you do that, you get P times 2100 
minus 150 P. So the revenue equation would be minus 150 P squared, that's this term, plus 2100 And so what do we have? Well, we have a quadratic. The A value is minus 150, right? And again, the B value is 21,000. And so again, the idea of what we're doing here is if we wanted to find maximum revenue, how would we do that? Well, the maximum revenue is the vertex, right? And so the first thing we need to do is to find the price, and then we could plug it back into the uh, revenue equation to get the actual revenue. So the price is actually the X value, right? In this aspect of it. And so uh, the, the P vertex B minus B divided by two times A, which is minus 50. And so if you did that calculation, you would see that you would get the number 70. So what does that mean? Is that to maximize your revenue, you would want to set the price at $70. So what is the maximum revenue? You have to get out your calculator to do this one. <laughs> and so when you do that, you get minus 150 times 70 squared was 2100 times 70. And if you got out your calculator and did that, you would see that you would make $735,000 of revenue um, at that maximum uh, with the price of the ticket of $70. And that would be the maximum revenue uh, given that the model that you have. So um, that's not what I wanted to do, sorry about that. So that uh, talks about uh, maximizing the revenue. And so that was uh, this calculation here, where what is the price to maximize revenue? Since the A value points down, you get $70, and then the maximum revenue of plugging it in you end up with uh, 735,000. So the other idea is that, especially when you do real world modeling, uh, the quadratic function, if it was just the math, right? No, no constraints with real world application, the domain is always all real numbers. But in this case, is the domain all real numbers? The answer is no. And it's a little bit tricky but let's uh, uh, chat about it. Uh, going back to the equation. Where did the whiteboard go? Here it is. And so we ended up having this equation and we have the vertex, right? So if you think about it, just gonna erase, give me a little spot. If you think about it, are you gonna have a price less than $0? I mean, just like physically, you're not going to have uh, selling zero more uh, negative wristwatches in our last one, right? And so in this case, we're not going to have a price less than zero. So what is very interesting to do is to calculate the x-intercepts. And to do that, we have minus 150 P squared plus 21,000 P would equal zero. And so um, when you do this, there's uh, a couple of ways to do this. Well, the first thing you see that there's a P in each one of these uh, factors. 
So we could factor out a PL. So you can see that one of the x-intercepts is going to be zero. It's also the y-intercept, right? Right at the origin. But we can also factor out 150. And you would see that if you got this one here, it would just be P. And if you got your calculator out, this would be minus 140. And that would equal zero. So our two x-intercepts is when P equals zero, which is zero, or when P equals 140. So what will end up happening if you look at this equation, after the price gets above 140, then your revenue turns negative again. And again, there's no reason why you would want to do anything to get negative revenue. So if you looked at what this graph would look like, and again, uh, you can go right on Desmos and away you go, it would look just like this in the sense that uh, the two intercepts are, uh, x-intercepts are 140 and zero. And then you can see where the vertex ends up being. So uh, being able to do uh, sketches with that, and again, you could just use Desmos to do this, uh, be very useful in uh, uh, modeling uh, any of that aspect of it. And so that's the same graph. Okay, to uh, finish this problem, uh, there's sometimes other questions that could be asked. Uh, and here, once you have all the equations in the model, it's more like plug it and chug it. And so let me show you a couple quick examples of those. And so that would be, for example, this first question. How many uh, tickets are sold at the maximum price? Well, when you... Uh, know that the maximum price is $70, right? And you want to calculate the number of tickets, you go back to your demand equation, which is right here. So you just plug in 70 in for the price, get out your calculator and um, walk through that and out comes uh, 10,500 tickets. And that's how many tickets that you would sell. Uh, we talked about uh, graphing the, the equation, which is always um, very handy in, in the analysis. Use Desmos. Uh, I again showed you, I just uh, got this right out of the book, but the book uh, modeled it as well uh, with regards to the, that calculation. And so it says, what price should be charged to collect 675,000. So that one's uh, a difficult one. And what I mean by difficult is that you have to set up the equation of $675,000 equals this, which is the revenue, right? And what ends up happening? Well, what ends up happening is you get a reasonably complicated um, quadratic with 150 for A, 21,000 for B, and minus 675,000 for C. This came right out of the book, and you can see it's actually factorable, uh, which is crazy that it, they set it up that way, but I would end it up uh, probably using the quadratic formula to do the calculation. But where, where is it? Well, there's two solutions. It's 50 and 90. And at first thought, you think that's kind of weird, right? And, but if you go back to our graph, you can see that uh, because it's a quadratic, you know, the axis of symmetry again is right down, uh, the vertical line uh, cutting right through the vertex, excuse me, I think of that word, right through the vertex. And if you go to the right or to the left, right, they should get the same Y value. And you can see uh, we moved 20 units, $20 to the right and added 20 to 70 to get 90 and we get 675,000. And you can see we also moved 20 units to the left or $20 to the left. At $50, we still get 675,000. So why is that the case? Well, when you uh, increase the price, you're gonna sell less. 
And if you decrease the price, you're going to sell more, which makes up the difference with regards to the physical aspect of that. So uh, that ends the uh, uh, recorded lecture for uh, maximizing revenue using a demand function. The next thing we're going to do is talk about uh, some, some simple geometric uh, shapes and how to maximize area.